So this is going to be a quick tutorial on how to use particles inside of the Cocos 2D for iPhone engine. I'm just going to use one image. So some of them are going to look pretty bad. Uh, it's just called stars.png inside of the folder where you downloaded Cocos 2. It's a folder called resources then images. You can find it in there. I've just moved mine to the desktop for ease of use. So to do this, you're just going to create a new Xcode, Xcode project using the Cocos 2D um, default template. I'm just going to save mine to the desktop for now. Once it's created, I'm just going to add my image. And inside of the default one, you have the hello world scene.m. I'm going to do all my work in there. Inside of the initialize method, I'm just going to delete all this code. Now, in order to use particles in Cocos, the root class is CC particle system. But you typically won't use a CC particle system class itself. There are a lot of subclasses you can use in order to make your life easier. So, in this case, I'm going to use CC particle, let's say, smoke. I'm going to say it has a thousand particles possible for fun. And typically, I prefer to explicitly allocate and init my methods or my classes and then release them. Uh, it gives me just a little bit more control over memory. So I prefer to do it that way. <clears throat> now, at this point, with the predefined particle systems, the only other thing you really need to do is add a texture. And to do that, of course, you just go through the texture cache, which is a singleton, so you can access it through the shared texture cache method. Then you just call add image. And don't be confused by the name, add image works with the cache, so if the image has already been loaded, it won't actually add it again. It'll just give you the cached one. So at this point, I have to fix my project. It's trying to use OS 3.0. I've just upgraded to 4.1, so that's now missing. Oh, and it's trying to install on the device. All right, now we're going to give it a minute to compile. But in a second, the simulator should pop up with a particle system, which is probably going to be in a bad position because I didn't change its position, spewing out some smoke. And here we go. So obviously I gave it too many particles because it's totally killing the frame rate. Let's make this 200. There we go, that's a little bit nicer. Still slowing down a little bit as we get near the higher particles, but it's reasonable. Now obviously particle system smoke isn't the only one. A uh, trick that you might have seen in Xcode it's when you are in the source file, up here, there's this C, and if you click on it, you can see the subclasses. And CC point particle system has all of these subclasses. Now, CC quad particle system has no subclasses of its own. So almost everything we're going to be working with is a subclass of CC point particle system. And I've shown you guys uh, smoke. As you can see, we have explosion, fire, Fireworks, flower, galaxy, meteor, rain, smoke, snow, spiral, and sun. So I'm just going to play with each one of those, but first I'm going to adjust the position of my particle system. Just going to center it in the screen there. Alright, so now it's somewhere a little bit more visible. Let's just go through it alphabetical just for fun. Let's try explosion. I won't look very good at the star. Most of them probably won't. Actually, I didn't look too bad. There's explosion. Uh, fire. So it's pretty similar to smoke. It's just kind of reddish. If we go into fireworks. just spews out particles and they fade away. 
Uh, next we have flour. So kind of a to me this is almost more of a circular effect than a flower, but I can see where it got the name. Galaxy. This one I kinda like. Kind of fun. Uh, meteor. And this one doesn't look so good if you just leave it standing there. It looks all right. Where it looks best is actually if you have it moving around. But I'm not going to bother working with that right now. So I'm just trying to show you nice and quick how this works. We got rain. I'm pretty sure you can guess what that one's supposed to look like. So as you can see, it's raining now. And of course, we also have snow. Which is slower rain, basically. Uh, spiral. And lastly, we have sun. So this is kind of more of a burning effect. I'm going to go back to... Uh, which one was it? Let's say the fireworks. Now if you take a look, you can kind of see there's some sort of gravity being applied to them. Now the neat thing is the customization doesn't really end right there. If we go to our particle system and hit escape to see all of the things you can modify, there's actually a lot of different values. And of course, it's a sub or it's a child of Coco's nodes. Some of those are coming from the root um, node class. But if we look in the class, oops, in the header file. Uh, this is a particle itself. We have the gravity, center of gravity, um, angles, speeds, tangential acceleration, radial acceleration, sizes, lifetimes, colors, spins, and so forth. Basically the point being there's a lot of different things you can modify. And to do so, for example, say I want to modify gravity, and say gravity goes down a lot more, Uh, it's probably going to be pretty intense on these um, fireworks. Actually, it's not so intense. Let's change that number. See if the fireworks are using gravity. You will have to play with it a little bit and see which one each particle effect is using. There we go. So this is using gravity. I've upped it a lot, so now the particles are falling way faster. And now we might not even see them rise. So with this you can see basically, uh, with Coco Studio we have the facility to use a lot of, you know, uh, pre-included particle effect styles. We can even create a particle system, modify that on our own I believe. And modify their properties to get different appearances through them. So it's a pretty nice system and it's pretty simple to use.